Today's vlog kicks off after we flew from Cairns, Australia after snorkeling the Great Barrier Reef and headed to Christchurch, New Zealand to begin van life. We've made it. At the airport, we were picked up by our chosen van company where we were given a brief tour and inspection before setting off to explore the South Island for 16 days. Uh, what do you call it? Emergency toilet or? Yeah, 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 emergency. emergency. By the way, quick thank you for all the help from our awesome Instagram followers who helped us decide on what to name our van. Welcome to New Zealand. After spending a ton of money on groceries and getting off to a bit of a rough start, we had finally hunkered down in our camp spot for the night, excited to begin our journey. Hey, we're Jeff and Bree. In June of 2022, we both quit our corporate software careers to travel the world as one baggers to cross off the items on our bucket list that our PTO just wouldn't allow for, as well as some other cool stuff along the way while trying to remain as budget friendly as possible. This was $5 uh, each. We have been endorsed by such valuable subscribers as Ben, who thinks we're doing a great job with our travel vlogs, and Bob, who really enjoys our packing videos, or perhaps Kiki, our speech coach. Thanks so much, guys. So if you like shaky video footage coupled with Jeff, who is basically a human golden retriever, that was the most ridiculous spirit purchase I have ever done in my entire life, and Bree, who is a real life version of Wednesday oh. Adams. Oh, oh, you okay? Then don't forget to subscribe and tag along. Good morning from our very first campsite in New Zealand. So yesterday we obviously landed in Christchurch and then we picked up our camping van and then we came to our very first campsite which was about two hours away and got settled and things in the van weren't quite what we thought that they'd be. Let me explain. But first, coffee. Before there's any attempt at making coffee, we have to turn on gas to the van, which you can't do inside, plus one Iceland. To come out here. Open our gas tank and turn on the gas. Instant coffee is going to be key for this kind of journey. So the first issue we ran into yesterday <laughs> with groceries, of course, when we were driving was that our door to the fridge kept flinging open. Things have gone horribly wrong. That's our fridge completely open with everything spilling out. And that's because this doesn't lock. We played with this thinking that this was maybe a lock. It's not. Just we tried to look for some kind of apparatus on the side here, but it doesn't exist. So we have to essentially keep it shut with the weight of Jeff's backpack. So issue the second we ran into was that it's pretty cold in New Zealand. I know it's summer here and I understand we're kind of roaming about the mountains and the lakes and whatnot, so it's gonna be a little bit cooler, but our van is freezing. It is freezing cold. There is no heater that you can turn on to our knowledge because no one told us about it. Uh, and we struggled a little bit last night. In fact, we slept in our heat tech clothing, so cheers. Yeah, you can see the uh, steam coming off of your cup. It's brisk morning. It's brisk. I don't even know if you can call these issues. I think they're just things that we were not expecting in the van, given that we watched like a pre-recorded tour ahead of time on YouTube. Um, but the second one would be uh, the light, the skylight. If you can see the sunshine flooding down on my face, it's not Jesus, it's the skylight. And the skylight comes with a lot of light. So it's actually kind of hard to sleep from about 6 a.m. onward because it is so bright. And don't get me wrong, we both have eye covers, but still it's not quite strong enough. We also have a like cover for it, but it does not work. And you can't get it past this point. And sometimes it just like drags itself back. So there's really no use in trying to do it anymore. Oh, it's stuck. Nice. 
Next up is gonna be our bed situation. And again, in the marketing videos we watched, the bed looked huge. It looked, it looked perfect for two people, which would be more than enough for Jeff and I, considering we're used to being super close together at this point, no matter where we stay. Um, but this one wasn't quite what we thought it'd be for a couple reasons. This area up here is of course our dining room table or where it should be. And then we have two additional seats here in the back end. Um, but what they don't tell you is that your feet, if you're kind of a tall person, and don't get me wrong, Jeff and I are not gigantic by any means. I think we're both about 5'9 or so. Um, but our feet sink into these little holes on the seat. So you're kind of dropping off no matter how you sleep. And we thought about putting our pillows here and then sleeping this way. It just didn't seem quite right to do that. There's also this guy that goes in the middle. It's just like a fabric upholstered brick kind of. And I guess it's to catch your feet in the middle of the night if they go falling off anywhere. But um, it just kind of forces you back into this little well, which of course all of the cold air sinks down here. So when your feet go in the middle of the night and they kind of drip down, uh, they are freezing. Again, these are not complaints and they're not even necessarily issues, but they are things that we didn't quite realize when we were booking the van because Juicy's marketing was so good that it looked like a truly all-inclusive van. The one piece of advice I have so far on this van journey is if you are over the height of 5'9 and thinking about coming to do van life in New Zealand, don't get a Juicy. You will not fit in the bed, I promise you. I don't actually know how to do this part. <laughs> maybe like this. Okay. Now maybe. <gasps> Got it! Ta da! So it took ages to leave the campsite, but I think we're slowly getting in a rhythm with the van and, you know, kind of the order of operations we want to do stuff in. And we were greeted by the most amazing view. Look at this. It doesn't really look that good from inside the van even, so we're gonna get out. So like Tekapo, which is this lake behind me, is famous as being a dark sky preserve, which means that there are basically no artificial lights that really impact the sky, so you get awesome star views. Unfortunately, yesterday it was kind of rainy when we arrived, so we didn't get to see anything, but tonight we're going to Mount Cook, which will hopefully have banging views. So in New Zealand, you have to drive on the left side of the road. So this is my first time doing that, as well as driving on the right side of the car. Godspeed. So we picked up our camper van at Juicy Rentals. They had this like fishbowl full of little bracelets and I was like, oh, those are cool. I wonder what they're selling. So I picked them up and I looked at it and in like three languages, it says drive on the left. <laughs> so I think it's just a good reminder since you're gonna have your hand on the steering wheel anyway, just to stay on the left-hand side. And I'm not gonna lie, it's been a little weird sometimes because when you're driving along, you know, you'll just get weirded out when you kind of get in the zone and all of a sudden you see headlights coming at you in what you think is your lane because you're used to driving on the right. Bring executive decision <laughs> to turn. <laughs> Things have gone horribly wrong. That's our fridge completely open with everything spilling out. Absolute chaos. Fridge isn't the cleanest. It's not on us, just so we're clear. This thing has been so useless and we have no idea where to put it, so we're gonna use it to block the fridge. So we have what's called a self-contained camper van, and that means that you can park up at any of these freedom camping spots as long as you have the ability to handle your own human waste and to be able to like cook and stuff. So we have a toilet in our van, a little cassette toilet, although they recommend we never use it, and honestly, my intention was to never use it because I don't really wanna to have to clean it, and the guy said it's very difficult to clean. Now, this does buy us this. We just pulled over here to rest, but there's a self-contained vehicle. So that means we can just hang out here and camp with this view. And other vehicles that are not deemed self-contained cannot do that. So when you're looking at planning your New Zealand road trip, figure out if you want a self-contained vehicle. Even though we're staying actually mostly at paid campsites, we just figured it'd be nice to have the ability because there are one or two times that we are gonna kind of freedom camp. So we just spotted something cool on the way. <laughs> and we're gonna stop him. 
Bree doesn't suicide us into another man. <laughs> I can't drive. Why am I driving? Welcome to Alpine Lavender. So we agreed early on that we would get some sort of scent so that we'd always be able to remember this trip based on the scent that we smelled because your brain creates a strong association with the memory when you have a smell involved as well. So I think we're gonna do lavender. So you'll notice by our cool little sticker that we have an entrance thing, basically, and it costs five New Zealand dollars each. So a little steep, but considering we're not sure when we're gonna go to the lavender fields in south of France, this will have to do. So this was 22 New Zealand dollars. Um, I think well worth it, considering we really want the van to smell nice. Juicy didn't leave it smelling so great for us, so this will work out. So I guess I should clarify just a couple of things and the first is that this is obviously going to be a multi-part series. We're here for 16 days, roughly two weeks, and there's no way we're going to be able to condense that all into one video, so we're probably going to break it up based on activities or day. And today we are driving to Mount Cook, which is this gorgeous mountain right in front of us. The goal here is twofold. So the first thing is we're hoping for some beautiful starry nights, however it's looking a little cloudy at the moment. so. Fingers crossed. The other thing is we wanted to do the Hooker Valley Trek. Now Hooker Valley Trek is one of the most popular trails that I read about online when researching New Zealand. And there are so many great hiking opportunities that we couldn't just do them all. So we wanted to pick some of the best. Now New Zealand had so much stuff to see and I was completely overwhelmed when trying to plan this trip because it's like, what do you do? Where do you go? And how do you get there? So obviously we settled on a camper van to travel around. It just made sense to give us the most freedom. And we're only gonna do the South Island because going to the North Island just added so much extra time, especially with a ferry. And while Bri is a huge Lord of the Rings fan and is pretty bummed, I think, about not seeing Hobbit Town, we agreed that the South Island held most of the highlights that we wanted to see. stopped at a gas station because uh, we picked up our van pretty late yesterday afternoon and it was full, the tank that is, and it is now completely empty. Well, we have like a quarter of a tank, but I don't think it's safe to be out in the middle of nowhere with that little gas. So if you come to New Zealand and you plan on doing van life, a lot of people say maybe keep your water tank only like half full because your van is very heavy and you burn through a lot of gas. By the way, I have a feeling this is going to be very expensive. <laughs> Things are going crazy in there. So we decided to back it in so we can open up the back to see some incredible views. We have officially made it to our camping spot for the night and the view is very nice. But before we head out on to our hike, I wanted to show you a couple things that we picked up for the preparation of van life here in New Zealand. First things first, we picked up two water bottles in Chiang Mai. These cost roughly $28 USD. Um, I think we got these for a steal and you can see that they say Hydro Flask on the bottom there. I think these are actually legit and they've been fantastic so far. Here in Iceland, they actually have a lot of places. Here in New Zealand. Here in New Zealand, there are actually a lot of water refill stations so that you don't have to purchase plastic bottles. So we knew that we were gonna need something substantial to keep our water cold and something that we can continuously fill up. Next up, we have our shower shoes. The idea here with the shower shoes is that we wouldn't have to buy them in New Zealand or Australia with New Zealand and Australia prices. I think these go for roughly 24 New Zealand dollars a piece. We picked this up in Chiang Mai on route to Taiwan a couple weeks ago. Uh, with the intention of saving money. In total, for both pairs of shoes, we paid about $3 USD as opposed to almost $50. And rounding out the list, we have our sun hoodies. 
So the thinking behind the sun hoodies was twofold. Number one, before this, we were in Australia snorkeling the Great Barrier Reef, and we really wanted something because in all the reviews of the boat that we were going to be on, they said that there's absolutely no sun protection unless you're below deck, which isn't really great if you're prone to getting seasick. So we picked these up. They were an absolute lifesaver on that boat and that snorkeling trip, and they're also a great addition for van life because, as you can tell, it's very bright out here and we're gonna go do some hiking and we didn't wanna be affected by the very intense UV rays that you can get here in New Zealand. Last but not least, we got a mosquito net. Obviously, there are a lot of mosquitoes, there are a lot of flies. Um, we just don't want them in the van. They're super annoying. I think at one point during our trip to Cambodia, we had a lot of mosquitoes in our room and Jeff was eaten up to the point that he had welts all over his face, including his lips. We're not about that life anymore. For those of you out there comparing and contrasting Iceland and New Zealand van life, keep in mind that there are no mosquitoes in Iceland. It's a beautiful thing. Just to qualify that, we literally mean zero mosquitoes. They have no mosquitoes on that island, period. I think there actually might be one and it's dead and it's in a museum for science. That's it. So in total for the sun hoodies we got them at Kathmandu in Australia, they were a hundred Australian dollars, so roughly I think 70 or 75 USD. And the mosquito net we got here, we tried to find these in Australia, but we just could not find anything, at least not within walking distance. So this cost 30 New Zealand dollars and we got it at Bed Bath & Beyond. So be aware, you're not going to be able to find it at places like Kathmandu or some of the camping stores that we visited. All right, so we're doing the Hooker Valley Trek, which is one of the most famous in this area. It's about three hours round trip. And there are various places you can stop on the way. So I'd say we're about halfway right now, and it's breathtaking. Just glaciers, mountains, wherever you look. We got awesome river, suspension bridges, it's got a little bit of everything. You can definitely see why it's one of the most popular hikes in New Zealand so far. Okay, we made it back from the hike. Obviously, it was a stunning hike. If you're here in New Zealand, you're hiking, you're going to guest houses, you're backpacking, whatever you're doing, you should probably go and see this hike. It was well worth every step. For now, we're just getting dinner ready. We're at a non-powered campsite, so we're trying to get dinner done while the sun is out so we don't have to rely so much on our lights. And Chef Jeff is in the kitchen cooking up some tacos. We found taco seasoning, ground beef, Tex-Mex rice and beans, not sure how that's going to work out, some tortillas, some sour cream, which is pretty important, and we're going to use some feta cheese instead of Mexican cheese or cheese blend, and uh, some wheat meal fresh wraps, as well as some salad that we're going to use in place of shredded lettuce. So not the worst. We are fed and showered now. If you can't tell, Breeze Yanni back there, she's tired. So we're just gonna kick back and relax for a little bit, wait for things to get a little bit darker here so that we can go check out these amazing, amazing stars. Hopefully it's gonna be great because we haven't seen a cloud in the sky since we've been back. So fingers are crossed. We're really hoping that we can A, see it, and B, capture it for you guys too. However, if not, we'll see you guys tomorrow for a full van tour.